Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. All custom designs are a challenge since we've never made them before. But this one was a bit more of a challenge. We were asked to do the logo of an auto company, the STI logo from Subaru. So as we pour the hot sugar on our table and then we add the color, let's look at this design. I come from the graphics field, so I keep on wanting to call this a logo but it's actually in the Subaru field called a badge. And this badge has a red background and white outlines to the letters. And it gets a little bit complex here because the white isn't really an outline of each letter, it's an interlinked shape. The next challenge is the actual colors. We use a white background to contrast with the colors of the shapes or the logos of the letters we make in the custom candy. In this case, the background needs to be red, which means it needs to be transparent candy. And the customer asked for the flavor to be sour, really, really sour blueberry, which means we're going to have to add a lot of citric acid, which I normally hide in the white. But in this case, I've got to distribute evenly throughout all of the candy. I've made enough letters that when I do candy with a few letters in it, I can just add lib. But something like this requires more planning, and I've been asked, how do I plan for designs? And I sketch them out. Actually, I sketch them out to the point that every piece of candy is planned for, timed. I take notes on what parts need to be colder than others, which order each piece has to be assembled in and built in to compensate for the sag of the candy. And I use my notes as I'm producing my candy. The candy cooling table has done its job and the candy is cooling down nicely. The edges are cooler than the center and we've got to fold it together to even out the temperatures. The drippy bits will burn me, the hard bits I can touch. But the real trick here in this one is I've got to get the acid in too. You see, I'm not pulling the red and usually that distributes the acid evenly. And if I have big hunks of citric acid in the candy, it's just not going to work out. The citric acid is going to add a bit of a haze to the red, but it's still going to look good if I do this right. And I've got to fold the white into it and I've got to keep the thickness of the white really even because the white's going to start absorbing all of the overwhelming red colors. Some of it's going to be an optical illusion, some of it is going to be direct transfer of the colors. The Subaru STI are called impresses, if I understand correctly, and I'm sure there's a few Subaru fans out there that'll be happy to correct me in the comments. But it is a four-wheel drive car that is used for racing around the world. It is a rally car, and it has a very small engine for the amount of horsepower it puts out. Usually when I make image candy, the majority of it is pulled. In this case, I just have a tiny bit of white to make, so I'm going to fold it over, and it only takes 27 pulls for me to make it white. It amazed me how fast it would go when it was a small batch. I don't normally get to do such small batches of white. I'm building the design so the logo shows up in three dimensions, so a cross-section of the final candy contains the letters STI and the outline, like the logo. This is a hard design to have designed, and it was very hard to build, so I'm going to leave the STI logo up at the top of the screen, so hopefully you can follow what I'm doing. Stage one is to build in flatness the red line that goes through the center of the I, the T, and around the S, and I'm going to attach to it a little dot for the top of the I. Every piece has to be precisely cut. So to do this, I made a ruler on the sheet of paper with every piece mapped out on it and how they all attach to one another. So I'm going to constantly hold the candy next to the sheet of paper to make sure that everything lines up just right. And there goes the top of the eye in just the right place. The next piece I have to make is the top white line above the S. If you'll notice I've been rolling this out with a small wooden rolling pin. Never did this before. Somebody in one of the comments asked, why don't you use a rolling pin to get everything nice and even? And I sat there and I thought, I have no idea why I don't use a rolling pin. It never occurred to me. Thank you to whoever that was. To make sure my white sugar bends around the top of the eye perfectly, I'm going to use my guide and use the guide to score the white sugar to give me points to fold on to give a crisp, sharp corner.
With designing a piece of candy, you're often working with negative space. Here I've got to put a piece of red that you're not going to see because it's going to blend into the background, but I need the spacer or the weight of the candy is going to crush the top of the eye, so I'm building it up into a flat surface. And now I can add the piece of white on the bottom of the S. It's a little tricky here because the candy is so cold and now I can fold it into an S shape. And I want to do this without breaking the candy. I also want it cold enough that it will not sag when I leave it alone, but warm enough that it's still just a little flexible. This is a very narrow point that's hard to stay at. The S is now upside down, and the tail of the S is so long it's going to fold over and stick to itself. I have to do two things. One, I need to support it temporarily with my spatula. And two, I'm going to put in a thin strip of red, more negative space, to support it when it's cool. I'm going to build the rest of the bottom of the design from left to right. And I'm going to start with the L that is the left side of the T. This is a little tricky. I need the corner to be really cold so it stays a corner. But I need the red mass that pushes around the curve of the S to be warm so it can form fit around the S. and one last shim of hot red to fill the space. Keep in mind, all these things are going to look identical touching each other, but I need them to be at different temperatures, and I can't see the different temperatures. I've cooled a piece of candy to match the temperature of the candy adjacent to it, and it becomes the vertical for the bottom of the tea. I'm constantly adjusting the temperature of the candy. I want the sugar to be the same temperature as the sugar that's adjacent to it in the final design. If it's too hot, it'll become a point that the design can bend in when I make it round. If it's too cold, it'll act as a piece that won't move or flow when I pull it out. I'm turning around between these shots and putting the candy on the candy cooling table to adjust the temperature hopefully just right. And now goes in the next element of the design. All that's left to do is the two stripes that'll complete the eye. By the way, we're located in Tallahassee, Florida. If you ever come by, please come and visit. We'd love to see you. We make candy often, but not all the time. We also would like to invite you to come by our website, www.pd.net. You can taste this candy at home no matter where you live. The logo is too cold to pull out easily. So we're going to wrap it with the hot candy that we've been saving. We're going to put a couple of buns on each side and wrap it all the way around. And we're going to then roll it for a while. And by doing this, we're going to even out the temperature of the candy. And hopefully it'll pull evenly. Once again, notice in this candy, the background is clear and the design is in white. This is, means the contrast is going to be very low. And added to that, because we put the citric acid into the clear, the red is going to be a little hazy. Mind you, for the flavor, it's worth it. Super sour blueberry is a wonderful flavor. We're going to have to add it to our selection of flavors sometime soon. So this is backwards of how we normally make our candy. But this actually has a different tradition. This style of image candy making can trace its roots to spots in Japan, where they had an independent movement like this and designs like this. They would do opaque centers, often flowers, with clear wraps around it. And it made for a very interesting effect, but limited the amount of detail they could do in their candy. I'm trying this with this design, I've never done it before, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And it only has one problem, the lights reflect off the shiny clear candy. I'm having a hard time getting good photographs of this candy, but it looks great in person. And I know some of you are going to say, sour blueberry and red? But with very few exceptions, color and flavor have very little to do with each other in candy. And we can have fun with this. And this person is obviously going to get his favorite flavor and a logo in the colors he wants as well. The dichotomy of colors and flavors in candy has perplexed people for ages. And if you take a look at XKCD's cartoon of this week, they actually covered it in a chart about colors and flavors in candy. There's a link to it down below in the description of this video. All we have to do is take our log of candy and pull it down into rods and keep the rods moving so that our rods don't go flat. Yeah. 
All that's left is to cut all the candy into little pieces, and we do this with our candy spatula, chopping at high speeds, dividing it up into about a thousand pieces for the spatch. He ordered a hundred ounces of candy, and we're going to bag him in three ounce bags for him before we send it out. Our, we do custom work all the time. We do one or two batches a week, so please plan ahead if you're interested in contacting us about custom work. And we have a lot of fun with it. It does break up the monotony. Thank you for coming by, we appreciate it. If you ever make it to Tallahassee, we're right off the I-10 exit at Thomasville Road. Please come and visit. We open at 7 a.m. for breakfast and close most days at 10 p.m. We serve ice cream, lunch, food, and all sorts of wonderful things. We appreciate seeing you. You could perhaps even be lucky and see us make candy in person right out front. And we make it out front, and that's why we call it Public Displays of Confection. And remember, you don't have to be in Tallahassee to try our candy. We sell it online at www.pd.net. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Our Instagram feed is now being used finally. We've joined the 21st century. Thank you again for visiting us.